So we're often asked by people, how can you possibly retire so early? How are you confident that you're going to have enough money to last you through mm -hmm. your 60s, 70s, 80s, possibly 90s? How do you know that you're not going to have to go back to work? Well, today we're going to talk to you about the five essential things that we have used in order to build our retirement budget to ensure success forward decades from now. Yeah, and we start our journey back to not our journey back to financial independence, but our journey to financial independence yeah. in 2019. At that time, we had sixty thousand dollars in consumer debt. Here we are in 2024. We retired it early. This is our third or fourth month of retirement. Mm -hmm. We are gonna be the example that you are looking for because we are sharing with you the results so far. Yeah, so we do share our results every month. We do a budget breakdown to let you guys know how we're tracking in our retirement. Mm -hmm. um, but today we really wanted to share with you the five things that we took into consideration in order to build the budget for our retirement. That budget is going to tell us how much money we are going to be spending each and every year on our lifestyle in retirement, right? So I think it's really an important step and it, it, you have to take the time to do it. Otherwise, yeah you're just grasping at a number and you don't know whether that number is going to be a realistic one for you or not. Yeah, let's go through the first step. And the first step is what does your retirement look like? It's not something that we're going to do after you retire. It's actually before mm -hmm. you retire. And why is that? Well, you have to envision what you want for your future, mm -hmm. right? We spend all of our lives working, working, working to retire. But what does retirement look like when you reach that goal? What do you want to do with your time? Like us, do you want to travel? Or do you want to spend more time with your family looking after your grandkids or nieces and nephews? Do you want to pick up a new hobby or a skill and learn that type of thing? All of this you need to know because it's going to influence how much cash you need, whether you're going to stay at home, whether you're traveling, whether mm -hmm. you're buying new equipment to finance a hobby. All of this mm -hmm. type of information is important for your budget. So you need to know, you need to envision what you really would like to do with your future. Yeah. And I understand that it's difficult. I'm going to use myself again mm -hmm. as an example, which is I am a guy who looks for perfection in everything that I do. And I wanted to have the perfect plan in my life with Christine and doing the things that we wanted to do. But I realized that it's actually quite impossible <laughs> because things are going to change no matter what. As a result, you need to have at least a basic foundation of what you are mm -hmm. looking for in terms of retirement. And with that, you can decide, okay, you can always adjust because no plan is going to be perfect. I can tell you <laughs> right away. Yeah. I mean, life is never perfect, uh -huh. right? You have to adapt as you move along. But having um, an idea will yeah. allow you to start planning financially for that future. Yeah. To give you another example on this item is we decided to sell our house. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking about should we keep our house in Toronto? Should we sell our house in Toronto? We end up selling the house, which helps us with the next step in our budget, in our plans as well. Yeah. I mean, it, that's just part of the, the planning, uh -huh. right? Like, are you going to downsize or not your home? The second step that you're going to have to kind of take is you need to start estimating how much money you're going to be receiving in your retirement years. Uh -huh. So where is your money going to be coming from? Do you have employer pensions that you're going to be drawing from? Will you be drawing CPP or government pensions? At what point will you be drawing those government pensions? Like us, do you have dividend income or investment income that you can utilize to fund your retirement? Yeah. You need to know how much money you're going to be getting because if you're not getting enough money, then your budget isn't going to work. Yeah. <laughs> you need to figure out all of those numbers before you can start to really build your budget as well. And again, don't expect to be perfect because it's not going to help. But those estimates, they kind of help us kind of you know, preparing and deciding what we wanted to do. Maybe you want to work part time. Mm -hmm. And if you do want to work part time, it's definitely going to help you with your budget as well. Yeah. But the, you know, the employer that you are working on, you're going to have benefits. So we can always adjust it. Don't Think of retirement something that you cannot come back. You can come back to you know work again because you want to maybe interact with other people. You want to do something totally different. You might be bored at home and you say, you know what? I got to get out of here and 
keep moving, right? So those things you have to consider as well. Yeah, so you need to know what your future looks like and where your money or how much money you're going to uh -huh. be bringing in. So those are steps one and two. Step three is you need to project your expenses. So now mm -hmm. that you know what you wanna be doing, how much is that going to cost? And it varies depending on that ideal future you mm -hmm. have set for yourself. Will you remain in your current home? Like us, are you going to sell your home and travel the world? What are the travel expenses you're going to be incurring? How much does it cost to live in another country? Mm -hmm. All of this requires a lot of research, right? So now you can start estimating your expenses and starting to build this budget for your future. Yeah, and by the way, even though I have not mentioned on the first one, which is the budget part, we do have a spreadsheet that you can mm -hmm. download it for free so you can keep track of your budget. Yeah, and I guess, sorry, one more thing to make sure you include in that budget is your health care. Like us, we need to pay for health care now that we're no longer living in Canada full time. But our friends in the US, that's a major expense that you also have to take into consideration. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an important one because as we get older, we know that we're going to need health care more and more yeah. frequently, yeah. right? So, 100%. Step four is you need to build your cushion. And what do we mean by that? It's basically how you're gonna do you have like a emergence plan or emergence fund. Yeah, and I mean I think this is where Jeanne and I have sort of figured this one out in the past few months because we have been over budget in every month since we retired. Yeah. <laughs> so we factored in a cushion amount into each month of our budget that if we are over, we're fine. Um, we ideally want to keep it at the five thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. But there's a little bit of leeway there, you know, we can check or uh, go either way. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously less is better because then we have more for free for future yeah. months. But it's, it's important to have a buffer. You need to have that safety net set aside for unforeseen circumstances. It's a thousand percent. And even using our example, again, with our dividend income, our dividend is $60,000 per year in dividends and distributions. It doesn't mean that, I mean, I wanted the dividends to keep going up and it's actually the case with our portfolio, even though we are not kind of you know, sharing with you guys the amount. Uh, on the members channel, we do have, we keep doing the dividend income and I'm not gonna lie, I love it once we see the companies increasing their, their dividends as well. Yeah, but that cushion, I think in our budget is 10 to 20% and it just gives us a little bit of peace of mind that mm -hmm. if something comes up, that we need to deal with, there is money there um, that can be used in our budget. And step number five is needs versus wants. I hope, I, I wish I could, let's say, fly comfortably every single flight that we have, but it's not gonna be the case at all. So we need to decide, okay, which one is more important than the other one. Yeah, I think sometimes people, and we're guilty of this as well, we confuse what we want with what we need. So your needs are very, really pretty basic and if your budget allows for the wants to be included, then that's amazing, right? But mm -hmm. we also need to be realistic in the budget and realize that, um, I mean, our real our retirement is not gonna be Instagram worthy. <laughs> that We're gonna see beautiful things, but what we see on TV and in social media is not reality, so we need to moderate our wants yeah. in life sometimes and just concentrate on what we really just need, right? And we can live an amazing life on, the, on a little bit less extravagant scale. Yes, and the only way, and I'm gonna repeat it again, the only way that you are able to do this is if you do track your budget. Because if you don't know where you're spending, it's not even in one year, it may be two or three years. And we have been doing that with our budget as well. It doesn't mean that this is a fixed budget that I cannot go over budget, which is actually the case with us, but we know where our money is going to and we know how we can cut or increase the mm -hmm. expenses as well. Yeah, and we do have a bonus oh. item as okay. well. Um, and this one, I think Jeanne and I do this, we've been doing this for the past four years already, is you need to reassess that budget annually. And what I mean by that is each year, at least for the first four or five years for us anyways, in retirement, we are going to be reassessing um, our finances with a fee-only financial advisor or cash flows and portfolios, mm -hmm. we use them quite a bit because their numbers are very similar to many other out there. 
just to make sure we're still on track, that our finances are still going to be there in the future when we need them. And if for whatever reason something changes and all of a sudden our money's running out at 80, now we need to pivot, mm -hmm. we need to change something in our budget to make sure that the money is now going to keep moving forward as well. We're not going to run out early, right? Yeah. And the same, maybe it's going to show us that we're going to have more money than we need by the time we're 110. So maybe that means we can up our budget a little bit each year, right? Yeah. Just to kind of reassess where you are each year so that you're not living too far below your means or too high above your means. Yeah, we are grateful for the opportunity that we have on retiring early. The fact that we don't have any kids, it kind of helps us a little bit, but we did work hard. It's not something mm -hmm. that came out of the sudden. You can go back to 2020 and 2021 when we started our channel and everything that you can see, you know, uh, in the channel. So it's a reflection of who we are. There are always ups and downs and we keep learning as we go. Don't expect it to be perfect. It might not be the case initially, but at least have some set of guidelines in what you are looking for in terms of retirement. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that your retirement is going to change. It's inevitable. Nothing that we all envisioned for ourselves when we were 15, 20 years old, is exactly the same as it is today when we're 45 and 50, right? Yeah. Your vision will change, but it's important to start establishing what your vision is, mm -hmm. calculating how much it's gonna cost, where your money's gonna come from, make sure you're able to pivot and change that plan as you go, reassess uh -huh. every year, you know, just try and stay on top of all of yeah. that stuff. I'm going to link down below a spreadsheet that you can use as an example. So this is the same spreadsheet, the same budget spreadsheet that we do use it. Feel free to download now that we are retired. It's kind of difficult to have the numbers, you know, on our spreadsheet. So we do have an app and by the way, I'm going to link a list of apps that we have been also using to support our travels as well. Yeah. And there, are, I mean, the apps are also good just in general so you don't need to be traveling to use them but they're no. really good just to have to help you yeah. maintain your financial health yeah. So, yeah anyways that's it for this week we just kind of wanted to outline how we went about building our budget for retirement the five steps we took into account plus that bonus one about reassessing every yeah. year and hopefully it was helpful if you have any questions comments leave them down below because it's beneficial for all of us to learn from each other yeah we hope that we are well we hope that we are safe and we'll see you in our next video yeah take care guys bye